So we're here with Dr. Paula Hammond, uh, the Bayer Professor of Chemical Engineering at MIT, and very happy to have Professor Hammond at UCSB. And I guess first, um, your research focus is layer by layer assembly. Um, what does that mean? Layer by layer assembly is this approach in which you uh, start with a surface that may have some initial charge. You immerse it into a dilute or aqueous solution that, that contains a multivalent charged material of opposite charge and you get adsorption. Uh, you form a model layer because essentially you get adsorption until the surface charge reverses and at that point electrostatic repulsion prevents anything else from depositing on the surface. You can then rinse the substrate and dip it into a dilute aqueous, aqueous solution that contains the oppositely charged polymer and you continue to move back and forth with rinses in between and you end up with this uh, alternating stack of, of charged polymers or other charged species in the layer by layer foam. And so these are charged species. What prevents them, uh, from, why, why aren't they just washed away when you stick them in the water? We used to think this with charges, you know, salts. Absolutely. Most of it will wash away, and the only thing that will remain on the surface is the single electro electrostatically adsorbed surface. Essentially, we're using charge to get this adsorption to take place. So if we take glass, which has a net native oxide that's negatively charged, and we immerse it into a polycation solution, that positively charged polymer will, will adsorb onto the surface until ultimately uh, you get enough adsorption such that polymer chains in solution see plus charge and they're repelled. At that point, you have a monolayer. So you actually have polymer chains that have contact, plus minus contact, and that charge keeps the electrostatic, uh, keeps the polymer electrostatically pinned to the substrate. We dip it into rinse water, and that removes anything that's not truly electrostatically adsorbed. But anything that is remains stuck. Yeah. And it's this electrostatic charge, it's actually a very strong force that allows us to maintain uh, the thin film. What are, what are some applications of layer by layer assembly? So we actually use them for several applications. Uh, we have been applying them as membranes that are used in fuel cells. Uh, we've applied them to the electrodes of fuel cells as well as the electrodes for batteries, uh, for solar cells, and uh, we're actually interested in them as solid state electrolytes for batteries as well. Uh, so we have a large range of, of applications that we think are appropriate for energy. On the other side though, uh, they can also be adapted as membranes, and those membranes can be used in water purification, which is something that we're interested in exploring. Uh, they can be used for uh, photochemical reactions, and uh, we can actually generate self-cleaning surfaces uh, using uh, materials that actually undergo reaction when they're exposed to light. And finally, we've been applying them to a large range of drug delivery applications in which we apply a thin film coating on a biomedical device that can release these uh, uh, different drugs or growth factors or proteins to the body at some sort of pre-scheduled rate. How does layer by layer assembly uh, an advantage over other assembly techniques? One of the biggest advantages is, is its simplicity. We actually can start with a water-based solution and we can use anything that is charged. So um, we actually can work on this using basins of water with solution at a desktop or a bench top. We don't need any expensive equipment, we don't need a vacuum, we don't need high temperature, we don't need high pressure. So it actually is much simpler and much more readily available than a large range of, of more sophisticated vapor or other deposition techniques. Yet, we're able to get nanometer control of the material system as we deposit it on the surface. The other thing is that we can bring in not only polymers, but nano objects into these systems and we can change their position in the film as we move along. So we can introduce quantum dots. Uh, we can introduce uh, metal or metal oxide nanoparticles. Uh, we can bring in a range of polymeric or organic um, nanoparticles as well. And there are a range of other things we've been putting into these films, including virus, uh, capsids, and uh, uh, a range of different nano objects like carbon nanotubes. And how is scalable is a layer by layer assembly process? <laughs> That's a very good question. We're actually very interested in making this uh, in a highly scalable process. Uh, the most traditional way of doing this is dipping uh, substrates back and forth uh, into different basins. 
And that can take us so far, but that limits the size that we're going to use for any kind of practical application. Um, there's also been some work on roll-to-roll -roll applications, and there is some potential for using roll-to-roll, -roll, although we still have some constraint on the time frame that we need for that. Uh, so we're actually working on a spray layer-by-layer -layer technique, and we've been able to use that to greatly accelerate uh, the rate at which we can generate these films. We can cover very large areas. So in our own lab, we can cover an entire silicon wafer, uh, but we've actually seen, uh, in, uh, through the work of my students, scale up of this to much larger areas, uh, two by two foot, four by four foot, and larger.